raven's flock, the flock run down is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock run down. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. The Ravens just suffered a heartbreaking loss, 27-20 to the Kansas City Chiefs. Played their tails off in the second half, or at least the fourth quarter, but there's a lot of bad things that we need to talk about. There's also a lot of good things and a lot of reasons to be optimistic moving throughout the season, but we'll start with the negatives and then we'll end on a positive note. The worst thing of the game, in my opinion, is the offensive line. I mean, they did get a little better as the game went on, but early in this game, Falele struggled. Chris Jones gone right around him. Also, McCarry right around McCarry. Roger Rosengarten's first snap ended up being a strip sack. I mean, this offensive line struggled. It struggled in the run game. We were not getting a lot of push. Derrick Henry was running into some brick walls. I'm not saying that they didn't improve, and this is kind of what we talked about all offseason, right? Like, if you're going to go with this young of an offensive line, you're probably going to have some serious growing pains. And I think that's exactly what we witnessed. I'm not saying that they won't get better halfway through the season and, and, and turn into a good offensive line, but man, this is exactly what we were concerned about. It's what we were afraid of. This offensive line was looking spotty in the preseason and it carried right over into this game. So I'm not blaming every single thing in this game on the offensive line, but that was a standout negative in this game. In my opinion, it was not a great debut from the young guys. Definitely want to dive into the tape over the next few days to really get a good grasp of who was messing up more consistently and whatnot, but just overall, you could tell the offensive line wasn't playing well. I mean, Lamar was trying to get rid of the ball instantly. They weren't able to run the ball. They didn't really even commit to the run game. We'll get to that in a second, but when Henry was running, he was running into brick walls. I mean, he made a few plays happen and broke a tackle, especially on that fourth down conversion, and the touchdown was a nice run, but I mean, he wasn't getting a lot of holes, let's be honest. there was, The offensive line was not getting much push. Shout out to the Chiefs defensive line, especially Chris Jones. That guy was wreaking havoc, almost impossible to stop for us. So definitely not happy with this offensive line. I'm not super confident in it moving forward, but as time goes on, I think they will grow. But I'm also not in a position to say that we shouldn't go make another move because I really just don't love this offensive line and I think it played out exactly like we thought it might and I know that offensive line wasn't getting a lot of push but 13 carries seems very low for Derrick Henry now Lamar had 16 himself some of those were just scrambled runs from a pass play breaking down but also he pulled the ball a lot he was taking over and we'll talk about Lamar a little bit later but I'd like to see Derrick Henry a bit more involved in this I know we were down two possessions and whatnot but we just weren't trying to run a ton when we did, I get it, we were running into a brick wall, but it felt like the AFC Championship game almost, you know? It was like, oh, we tried to run once, and it didn't work, and we're just going to keep throwing screens and short passes and just trying to get out of this, and I just really wish that we would have stuck to the run and committed a little bit more earlier in the game, and it kind of just got away from us again. Then we were down two scores, the clock was ticking, we had no timeouts in the second half because we had miscommunication on defense. It just was sloppy, man, and I guess these are the things you get when you don't play in the preseason. You don't have a ton of time to iron these things out. Like Roquan said in his press conference, these are self-inflicted wounds once again. Obviously, uh, there was a lot of mistakes out there, um, and that's not what we pride ourselves on. And I think that starts with me uh, communicating each and every detail throughout uh, to the guys and making sure we're all on the same page. And if we're all on the same page, we're a tough defense to move the ball on. But a lot of the things that happened was self-inflicted, but hats off to those guys. They uh, made us pay for it, and hey, it's a game of inches. But it's tough to keep saying that, you know what I mean? It's tough to just use that as an excuse, like, oh, we would have won if we just didn't beat ourselves, but it happens a little too often in big games. Not that this game had a ton of meaning on it. I, I really don't think it did. It's week one of a long, long season. 
who cares if it's the Chiefs or not. But it's another example of just beating ourselves up against a team like the Chiefs. You can't do that. You know what I mean? If we didn't have a lot of those self-inflicted wounds, we may have won. We may have been in a better position. Give the Chiefs credit, though. They definitely deserve to win this game. We did have a lot of self-inflicted wounds. The penalties was another major point. I mean, what, four or five illegal formation penalties? I felt like they were trying to put a tape out for the rest of the NFL on what you shouldn't do. Even Ronnie was moving up. There were a couple times I felt like he was actually in line, and they're like Hawkeye in it. Like, nah, we're going to call it. We're going to call it. We're just going to keep setting an example here. Th those are drive killers. That's a momentum killer. You can't just call every single little thing like that, man. I, I, I really disagree with how much they were calling that illegal formation. I thought that was ridiculous. And then there were a couple other plays that were self-inflicted wounds. The Matabike roughing the passer when we could have had Mahomes in third and 20 and instead it's a first down. Like Those things are crucial, man. You cannot have things like that. There were a couple offsetting penalties that if we just didn't have the personal foul out of bounds or something like that then it would have been 10 yards back for the Chiefs like little things like that that aren't going your way that you're inflicting on yourself is so avoidable and I'll keep going back to this is the preseason for us we did not play a snap in the preseason the, the main starters didn't play a second so it's almost impossible to come into week one and be playing your best ball you need to have a little bit of experience I'm not hyping up the preseason but it gets you going a little bit. It, it probably takes a few mistakes away. So like Roquan said again, I'll refer to him in his press conference. He said, this is the worst game we'll play all season. It just sucks that it happens to be probably the top team we're going to play all season and we play our worst game. You know, that that's not good to hear and that's not what we wanted to see out there. And overall, the defense wasn't awful, but there's definitely some bad to take away from the defensive performance tonight. I thought that they were letting up way too much in the middle. Honestly, that first half, they were letting Malik Harrison line up against wide receivers in the slot, and the Chiefs were just taking advantage of the mismatch. I mean, Harrison should never be on Rasheed Rice. It's a guaranteed catch. That's just never a good game plan. That should never happen. And I'd rather have Trenton Simpson out there full time than have Malik Harrison out there trying to cover receivers. You know, and then the middle of the field, they were killing us over the middle of the field. The busted coverage on the Worthy touchdown where Marlon Humphrey thought that he had a safety help and let Worthy run right by, but there was no safety help. Just bad miscommunication, more self-inflicted wounds. Adafe Owe with another near sack that Mahomes somehow escapes and hits Travis Kelsey for a 30-plus yard gain downfield. I thought Owe was kind of getting locked up by the Chiefs' rookie tackle. So that's not a great sign. You know, I, I, I really, we really need a way to shine this year. You know, there's no reason that he shouldn't be dominating a rookie tackle. And like I said earlier, I definitely got to go back and take some time and watch the tape. Maybe Owe was playing better than I thought, but just from a surface level, these are my first thoughts right after the game. It seemed like he was kind of getting clamped up, not putting a lot of pressure on Mahomes. The one play that he really did have a chance to grab Mahomes, he missed again. And that just is the story of Adafi Owe throughout his Ravens career is a bunch of near sacks. I'm not saying he can't put it together. I'm rooting for Adafi Owe. I'm just calling it like it is, you know, I'm not seeing him get to the quarterback. I'm about to get into all the good things that happened in the game. And there were some guys that got to the quarterback that I feel like Adafi Owe should have been able to take advantage of against a rookie one-on-one -on -one too. It's not like Adafi is getting double, triple teamed. Like he's going one-on-one -on -one against a rookie tackle and he never got to the quarterback. So those were a lot of the bad things that I took away from this game. There's definitely a lot more, you know, we could talk about going for it on fourth down and Nelson Aguilar not making that block to convert that fourth down conversion and just things like that. We almost went for two if Isaiah Likely's toe was in there at the end of the game. I mean, we would have went for two. I saw Harbaugh running out on the field holding up two, so who knows what would happen there. That would have been a whole different conversation, but unfortunately we didn't even get there. But let's hop into the good things. It was not all bad. I thought that the Ravens fought their tail off at the end of the game, man. I really, that comeback was shocking. I, I, I thought down 10 with one timeout and not a lot of time left, I was worried that we could potentially get blown out. And it was the exact opposite. The Ravens came marching back, almost hit Isaiah Likely. I mean, inches, just a toe out of bounds and that would have tied the game or at least put us in position to tie the game maybe we would have went for two I don't know but 
hell of a comeback for sure. So respect. The team fought. Like Roquan said, I will echo this in a positive direction. That's probably the worst game you're going to see the Ravens play all season long. It's the first game. It's like their first preseason game. So we are going to get better. The offensive line is going to get better. Everyone's going to play better. I didn't think that it was an awful performance across the board, but definitely a lot to improve on. And it sucks that you know, we're going against the Chiefs in what's kind of a revenge game a little bit. I know week one, it's not the biggest deal, but it sucks that that's our worst game. That's all I'm saying. I would have liked to have a better game against that team, but it is what it is. A major positive from this game was Lamar Jackson's performance. Now, I know there were a couple throws at the very end of the game that he probably should have connected on, like that Zay Flowers one or even Isaiah Likely's first touchdown. It was kind of a bad throw. He should have led him more to the sideline, but... Lamar bald, man. Let's be honest. 16 carries for 122 on the ground, 273 through the air, touchdown pass. Should have almost had another touchdown pass at the very end. Lamar put this team on his back. Whenever there was a running lane, whenever there was an opportunity to move the ball forward, he was taking it. I thought he was decisive with his throws when they were bringing a lot of pressure. He was taking off quickly. He looked a lot more explosive. Like, I definitely noticed that weight loss. I thought he was shiftier and faster than we've seen him in years. Lamar's not going to be afraid to run the ball this year. I think that weight loss allowed him the freedom to kind of get back into his own body and comfortability. And I think he's going to run quite often if there is lanes to run. Now, I'd like to see Derrick Henry get the ball a little bit more, but I'm not mad at Lamar just taking what the defense has given him, and they were letting him run. It was kind of like the AFC Championship. There was a lot of opportunities for Lamar to run, and he was taking advantage of that and taking off in this game. I also was super impressed with him leading us on that 87-yard, two-minute drive to you know, try and tie the game. You know, we're, like I said, we're an inch away from Isaiah likely tying this game or giving us an opportunity to, and Lamar led that drive down the field. Shout out to Rashad Bateman with that big catch on that last drive as well. He wasn't really involved this game. I definitely want to go back and watch the tape to see if he should have been a little bit more involved, but for some reason, Lamar wasn't really looking to Rashad or Mark Andrews in this game. I think Mark Andrews is getting a lot of attention. And uh, that led to another really shining, bright star from this game, and that's Isaiah Likely. I mean, he had a surprisingly great game. I'm not surprised that he could do this. It's just with Andrews back, I didn't think Likely was going to be this involved. We talk so much about we need to get Andrews and Likely on the field together, and then look at this. I mean, Isaiah Likely had nine catches for 111 yards and a touchdown. Should have had two touchdowns. I mean, that's crazy, man. That's that's a hell of a game from him, a breakout type game, and he's in the backup tight end role. You just, you def, no one saw that kind of game coming. Mark was drawing some attention, and Lamar and Likely were just taking advantage of the mismatches that Likely was having. I think that can continue throughout the season, and if people start showing more attention to Likely, then Mark Andrews is going to start to ball too. We definitely got a two-head monster at tight end. We knew that, but Isaiah Likely prove that for sure and Munkin proved that he can get Isaiah Likely involved even with Mark Andrews out there the first touchdown that Isaiah Likely had I mean he straight up put the team on his back Lamar's rolling out nowhere to go throws one up Likely comes back to it runs down the sideline hits the Lamar Jackson stop <laughs> lets the defender go past walks into the end zone Isaiah Likely was balling today absolutely ball and put the team on his back I don't have anything bad to say about Isaiah likely he got hurt on that one that Lamar threw way too high came right back and almost caught the game winning touchdown so shout out Isaiah likely Justice Hill was another shining spot he had a lot of check downs especially when Lamar was in trouble they were kind of running crossers and then Justice Hill would just sneak out and no one was really covering him, and it was kind of Lamar's outlet, you know, no one else, nowhere else to go, and he can hit Justice Hill for a first down. They did that a couple times. Justice Hill ended with six catches for 52 yards. I, I definitely think that he's going to be involved in this passing game because Derrick Henry wasn't very involved, actually wasn't involved at all in the passing game, wasn't even out there for a lot of passing downs, so I'm not sure if that'll change at all. Not that Derrick Henry is known for being a receiving back or anything, but it's kind of obvious when Justice Hill's out there and you never run the ball that you're probably passing. So 
Hopefully they do mix that up a little bit, but shout out to Justice Hill. I definitely think he balled today. And then on defense, I thought Ajabo had a great game. That was his first real game back, and we saw him shining a little bit in the preseason, and he carried that right over. Had a big third down sack on Mahomes to get us the ball back. If Ajabo could stay out there this year, he can definitely be a piece. To me, he looks like more of a natural rusher. I really like Ajabo's game. Definitely want to dive into the film. I felt like maybe a few times he wasn't setting the edge right, but... I want to go back and check, but regardless, him having a sack in his first real game back to me is a shining moment. The fact that you can come out there and make a play like that in a game like this. Ajabo seems to do that every game, too. This is not new. You know, last year, first week against Houston, strip sack on C.J. Stroud. Year before he comes in, after a long season of not playing, strip sack Joe Burrow. Like, Ajabo's making plays. You know, when he's out there in a meaningful game, Ajabo steps up. Another guy I was super impressed with is Trenton Simpson, man. I don't want to even see Malik Harrison out there, really. Uh, Trenton Simpson in pass coverage was phenomenal. Had one where Rice was coming across the middle again just like they've been taking advantage of but Trent Simpson with the pass deflection Malik Harrison would have been beat by four yards you know what I mean so shout out Trent Simpson he also had a half sack early in the game with Matabike and I just thought Trent Simpson was flying around great in pass coverage sideline to sideline tackles finding the ball he had that big pass breakup on Mahomes on third down at the very end of the game it was the one where Mahomes caught the own pass to keep the clock ticking but regardless Trent Simpson swatted that thing out of the air and I just really feel like he was flying around. For this to be his first game out there starting for us, I was super impressed. The sky's the limit for this guy. I think he's going to continue to blossom game after game. Shout out to Trent Simpson, man. And then another guy that really stood out, he was a breakout player prediction for me earlier in the offseason, is Travis Jones. He played a ton in this game. He was consistently moving the Chiefs line back. He caused that Roquan Smith interception because that pressure was straight back into Mahomes' face. Mahomes let it go couldn't get enough on the throw. Roquan there with the diving interception. Travis Jones was disruptive. I think this is the only the beginning for him. Travis Jones and Trenton Simpson are going to be young star stud pieces for the Ravens for years to come. But to sum it all up, sloppy game overall for both teams really, but especially the Ravens. Ton of penalties, a lot of self-inflicted wounds. Not taking that away from the Chiefs. Chiefs deserve the win. They won fair and square, but Man, I feel like that was one of the worst games we could have played and probably is the worst game that we're going to play. I think that we'll just continue to get better week after week. There's no doubt that the line is going to improve. I felt like they improved during that game. I'm still not confident that this is the unit. I think that bringing in someone else is a potential option that we need to be exploring. But I I do have confidence that they're going to get better. I don't think they're going to take steps back. I mean, this is probably the worst they're going to play. And I had a feeling that was how it's going to go when coming into this game, that we're going to have a lot of growing pains early in the season. And this game proved to be that. Got to clean the penalties up. That stuff was ridiculous. Refs a little bit to blame in that regard. The illegal formations especially way too many I mean let's be honest that that was crazy hopefully every team's not getting called like that I think they just decided to use the Ravens to set a precedent but we'll see we'll see if they are calling that across the league for five illegal formations uh, I doubt it even though it's a tough loss there's a lot of good to take away from this game Lamar Jackson is going to lead this team Lamar Jackson's going to ball this year. Derrick Henry is going to be a piece for us, especially as this line gets better. I think we need to use Derrick Henry more. The defense is going to have to improve their communication, but all that stuff's just going to happen, man. That's why I said it's like the first preseason game for us, and it sucks that it happened to be against the Chiefs. I'd have rather just had an easier week one battle where we could have slopped our way through it and still got the win, but we're playing a really, really good team who's going to be competing for their third straight Super Bowl and we had our worst game. The comeback gave me a lot of optimism moving forward. I was feeling pretty bad in the mid-third quarter or entering the fourth quarter. I was like, man, I was feeling a little hopeless, but the fact that we stormed back like we did showed as much fight as we did, and we were fighting all game, don't get me wrong, but the scoreboard started to get a little bit out of hand. We were just making a lot of mistakes. We went down and scored on that Isaiah Likely, and then boom, blown coverage, worthy wide open down the sideline I mean you just can't have stuff like that and I don't think we will have stuff like that moving forward but this was the game where we had to work out some kinks and it is what it is so I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in to another episode of the flock rundown have a beautiful rest of your day 
and I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can tame the untamed.